Our first whiteboard video for Bio 201 is actually a review of stuff you learned in Bio 156. That might be a new experience for some of you. You may not have ever taken a real prerequisite before where you are expected to remember stuff from a course in a later course. We do that here. You really need to know the Bio 156 stuff and you need to be really familiar with it so it's right off the top of your head. You shouldn't have to stop and think about it. The stuff I'm going to cover right now is not only in Bio 201, we still use it all the time in Bio 202. In fact, we use it even more in Bio 202. So, um, I want you to know this stuff. I'm going to quiz you on it and test you on it because it's so important for the next two semesters. So let's go. First thing, before I even get into the main topic, I want to comment on uh, the mo one of the most important chemical reactions in the human body. And you may remember from Bio 156, what is the energy currency? What is the molecule that is the energy currency of your body? The energy that provides most, the molecule that provides most of the energy for everything you do. Just talking, moving my hands. There's a molecule that you burn, you use in order to release the energy in it. That molecule, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Now, the main way you make adenosine triphosphate is with something called aerobic respiration. And in aerobic respiration, you have two main input products. What are the two input products? What do you need to have? And uh, you get these through breathing and through your diet. What do you need to have in order to make ATP? You need oxygen and you need C6H12O6. And what's C6H12O6? That's glucose. So when you combine oxygen with glucose, you make ATP. But you also make three byproducts. The three byproducts, two of them are helpful byproducts, one of them is a toxic byproduct. Let's look at the toxic byproduct first. That's CO2. Carbon dioxide is toxic. If it builds up in your body, you'll go into acidosis. So CO2, you have to get rid of that. How do you get rid of that? By breathing out. All right. The other two products are water and heat. Both of these are useful. Water, of course, you always need water for everything. Heat, this is what maintains your constant body temperature. That's why you stay at, what's your body temperature? 37 Celsius, 98.6 Fahrenheit. That's why when you're cold, you shiver. When you shiver, your muscles shake. Your muscles are where you make most of your ATP, so when you make tons of ATP, you make heat as well. All right. Make sure you know this equation right here. Um, we use this over and over and over again, and especially when we get to the muscular system. Um, every cell in your body needs ATP in order to stay alive, in order to function. Um, there's a special name we use for cells that are not making ATP. We call them dead. A cell that is not making ATP is dead. So this is going on constantly as long as you're still alive. Let's look then at the macromolecules. Macro, big, molecule, you know, a combination of chemical elements. Oh, that didn't help anything, did it? And now my board is really messy. Um, but that's okay. I'm kind of messy myself. So. Um, we have for each macromolecule the type the polymer, poly, many, mer units, many units, the monomer, the one unit, and then the function. So let's just start by taking a look at the types of macromolecules. First one let's look at are carbs. All right? Carb is an abbreviation for carbohydrate. What's hydrate? That's water. What's in, what are the uh, chemical elements in water? H2O. So what are carbs made of? Well, they're made of carbon, carbo and hydrate water. So carbs are made of C's, H's and O's. And they are the molecules, well let's let's just continue then. So polymers for carbs, there are really two main ones. Starch is what you get from plants. That's the way plants store carbs. So starch found in plants. Then there's another one called glycogen. We're going to talk a lot about glycogen. And glycogen is how animals store carbs. So you store glycogen in your skeletal muscles and in your liver, right? 
So these are the two sort. These are the two ways that plants and animals store it. Our main dietary carb is starch. When you eat most foods, pl uh, plants especially, uh, fruits, vegetables, you're getting starches, and starches are the polymer. Now, what's the monomer? What is the molecule? These basically are like big long strings, where it's like I've got this. I've got a bracelet here with individual beads, all right? The whole bracelet would be a carb. What's each individual bead? That's a molecule of glucose. So that's the same, glycogen would be the same thing in animals. So carbs, you store them, plants as starch, animals as glycogen, and then when you need energy, you break the polymer down into the monitors into molecules of glucose. And remember, we needed glucose and oxygen to make ATP. Plants do need that as well. And then, so what's, what are glucose for? This is for what I say immediate energy. So all the moving I'm doing, all the talking, I am using carbs to manufacture ATP and it's providing the energy from what I'm doing. That's the main purpose for carbs in your body. They provide the energy used to do the stuff you do. Let's take a look at the next macromolecule, proteins. So proteins, um, the polymer is a protein, in fact, all right? Proteins and then small protein, proteins are called peptides. We use that word a lot in bio 202. So proteins and peptides, and what are proteins and peptides made of? Once again, they would be like a string of beads. And what's each individual bead? Each individual bead is an amino acid. And let's remind you of why they're called amino acids. Because every amino acid has this uh, form. It has an amino group, an NH2. Whoops, I should write it this way. It has an NH2 and it has a COOH, a carboxylic acid. So amino acid. It's got an H here, a hydrogen, and here R for residue. This is how different amino acids are different from one another. They have different structures down here. But the amino acid part, um, that's what amino acids are all alike except for this R group. And they are the building blocks of proteins and peptides. And what are they for? I get a lot of confusion about this. When I ask people what proteins are for, normally I get wrong answers. So there are two kinds. There are fibrous proteins. Fibrous. Um, stringy kinds of proteins. And what are they for? Fibrous proteins are the structure of your body. So you are made of fibrous proteins, your skin, your muscles, your bone, all that, the matrix of your bone anyway. So you are made of fibrous uh, proteins. Your internal organs are made of protein. Protein is what you're made of. When you grab someone's arm, you're grabbing a big, massive chunk of protein. You're built from protein. Now there's another kind of protein called a globular protein. And what are globular proteins for? Those are the workers in your body. So these are the enzymes, the hormones, the pumps, the transporters. Um, globular proteins, these are, uh, these are hard, hard working molecules, okay? They wear hard hats and carry a lunch pail and punch a time clock. All the metabolism of your body, all the things that are taking place inside your body are being done by globular proteins. So, Sometimes I hear people say proteins, well, they're for energy. No, no, carbs are for energy, all right? Um, the only time you ever use proteins for energy is basically when you're starving to death. You see people who are starving, they're nothing but skin and bone. That's because they've broken down their muscles for energy. Your body has to be pretty desperate to do that. So proteins, that's what you're made of. That's what does all the work inside of your body. So the next macromolecule, lipids. Lipids fat, okay, lipid fat. So um, what are the lipids of your body? Well, the 
main lipids that we're going to look at um, in, in our class um, are triglycerides, phospholipids, and cholesterol. These are all fats, okay? Now let's take a look and see then. These are the monomers. These are the big giant molecules. I mean, these are the polymers, rather. They break down into the monomers. What are the monomers? For triglycerides, it's glycerol plus fatty acids. Fatty acids are basically just big strings of carbons with maybe a C and an H and an O on the end or something. So, um, what are triglycerides for? Triglycerides are for energy storage. So when you eat more food than you can use right at the moment, when you have that second piece of cheesecake, all right, and you're just sitting on your butt doing nothing, you can't really use that energy, so your body figures, let's save it for later. And that's what you do. You turn anything, we'll see that in bio 202, you can turn anything into basically triglycerides and store them for later use. Glycerol can be converted directly into a molecule of glucose, and fatty acids are very high energy. You may know if you've done a nutrition class, carbs are four kilocalories per gram. Fatty acids are nine kilocalories per gram. So fatty acids are high in energy, especially things like skeletal muscle and heart muscle are happy to use fatty acids for energy. The brain really wants glucose. But in any case, the triglycerides are the way you store energy for later, right? Phospholipids, what do we have in this case? Well, once again, we have fatty acids, but it's a phosphate group now. That's why they're called phospholipids. And you should recognize this. So we have a phosphate plus fatty acids. And the main thing with phospholipids is they make up the phospholipid bilayer in your body. These are the cell membranes that go around every cell. It's what keeps the cell, the insides of the cell, separate from the outsides of the cell. So Phospholipids are very important. Um, we'll talk about them like in the, in the muscular system. We'll talk, for example, about toxins that break down uh, phospholipids. All right. um, then cholesterol. Cholesterol really isn't a, a polymer per se, but I'm just going to put in quotes here for the monomer, um, the four ring structure. Um, cholesterol is really easy to spot. It's got these four rings, all right, the structure of the molecule. And what's cholesterol for? Cholesterol, for one thing, stabilizes the phospholipid bilayer, the cell membrane. But steroids are important for another uh, reason, and that is that steroid, or cholesterol rather, and for, for, important for another reason, um, that's steroid hormones. So, the sex hormones, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, plus what we call the corticosteroids, things like aldosterone and cortisol. Actually, vitamin D is a steroid hormone as well. Most people don't think of it that way, but it is. So, cholesterol, if you were to watch TV, you would think cholesterol is bad. No, cholesterol is good. And the only thing bad is when you um, have, you know, double bacon Angus cheeseburgers for bre breakfast, lunch, and dinner and you get like a month's worth of cholesterol in one day. That's the only time it's a problem. Cholesterol is good. Your body makes most of your cholesterol, something like 75 or 80 percent. The rest comes from diet, so it's the minority that comes from your diet. But cholesterol is good, does a lot of things, very important, steroid hormones. And then finally, the last, um, uh, last type of uh, macromolecule, um, nucleic acids. So nucleic acids and the polymers, the main ones that we talk about are DNA and RNA, right? DNA, RNA, and what, um, what are the monomers of these things? They're nucleotides. Remember nucleotides? That happened in Bio-156, I'm sure it did. Um, I don't really care so much um, about the monomers here. Um, the main thing we care about is that nucleic acids are your body's instruction manual. All right? So we said that the proteins are the workers of your body. Well, how do the workers know what to do? 
they know what to do by looking at the instruction manual. So DNA and RNA provide all the instructions necessary to make proteins and to do all the actions inside of your body. This is the one we're least concerned about. We're not going to deal with this much at all. We deal a lot with carbs, proteins, and lipids. So I want you to be really familiar with the polymers, with the monomers, and with their function. Um, and again, this is uh, not just Bio 201. We do this virtually every day in Bio 202. So make sure you know these. Uh, you are going to get tested on them, and you need to get them really solid in your head so you know them right off the top of your head without having to think about it, okay? So text or email me with questions about this, okay?